In this video, I'm going to show you how you can group by in Power BI in three different ways. One, using Power Query, two, using DAX, and three, using a table visual. So with that in mind, let's head over to my Power BI desktop. So if you want to follow along, I have the data set in the description below. So once you get that downloaded, let's get started. First things first, we want to be able to create a group by using Power Query. And to do this, you can do this straight as you load in the data set. So in this case, I'm going to do load up transform data. But for you, when you import it, just go to not load data, but transform data, and then we'll be in the same view. So once that's loaded up, two things we want to do, slightly clean up the data by removing any of the blanks under date of survey, and then also converting the date of survey to an actual date format. So if we go up to date of survey and then remove blanks, then if you right click and then go down to change type and then go down to using local. And then once that pops up, we want to change that to date. And then as we can see, this is month, day, year. We know that's in US format. So we want to go down to English United States and then do OK. So now we have that in the format that we want. We want to now copy this by going to reference instead of duplicate. And then we want to rename this PQ so we can then refer to that as the Power Query table. Now we have our table name. You want to go up to transform and then under transform to the far left, we have group by. You click on that. You'll then be given the option to be able to check what you want to actually group by. Now at the moment, it's using main hierarchy, which is this column here, and then it will count the number of rows. If we did that, and as that's main hierarchy and did OK, we'll just see how many rows are there in the data set. If there was other main hierarchies, which you probably should only have one main hierarchy, but in the other hierarchies, if you did it under there, it will change. So for an example, if we were to go for hierarchy one, then there'd probably be more. Yeah, so there's four more, but the majority is under there. So this is a good way to kind of quickly start looking at your data set to be able to understand how many rows there are and other things as well. But for this example, what we want to be able to do because we're using survey data is to be able to look at the main sort of areas. So in this case, we're gonna be using a tier of the type of where the customers sit with their membership. And then we want to understand how many responses did they do, which is what the count does. And then we want to know when the first survey was done and then the last survey was done so we can see the time frame of those responses. And then also the average overall score that was given in those surveys. So to do that, we click back on the cog and then we want to select original customer tier code and then we only have one option at the moment. If we go up to advance, we now have other options. So we could technically keep having more groups to add to that point, but we want to add more columns for the aggregation. So as I mentioned, we want to have the min date or the first date of the date of survey. So to do that, we want to use min and then we want to select date of survey and then we want to call that min date of survey. And then if we was to just do okay for now, we can see when the first survey happened for each of those tier codes. Now, if we were to go back and then add in the same for max, so let's call that max date of survey and then do max and then date of survey. And then we wanted to get the average score. So if we do average recommended score, because that's the column we're going to be using. And then we click average. And then down here, you see recommended. That is the score for would you recommend this company to people and see what the average score is. And then if we did OK now, we can now see when the last survey was done and the average recommended score. And as we can see, platinum has the highest and it looks like number one club member has the lowest average score. They also have the lowest number of responses, which reminds me here, we've called that count, which technically is true, but we want to keep this consistent. So if we call this one number of responses and then do OK, we can now save this file by doing close and apply. And then we'll have this table saved as another table in our Power BI. So now that's loaded in, we can just drag and drop into this example here. 
for this table. So we had original customer tier code as our first one, and then add number of responses, and then min date of survey, and then max date of survey, and average recommended score. And if we just move this table out slightly, we now have all that information there. And then we can sort by the average score. And as we can see, Platinum's top with number one club member being bottom. So now that table has been created and now you know how to do that in Power Query. What happens if you wanted to do the same just using DAX? Well, you can with table. So what we need to do is head over to our modeling tab. We click on that. And if we click on new table, now once you click on new table, you then get the option to create what the table is called. So we're going to keep this in the same context as what we've got here. So if we call this NPS data set and then in brackets DAX, we're now going to have a table that's called that. Now to create a table, what we want to do is use a function called summarize columns. So if we were just to go down one line, just to make this easier on the eye than just having a string of code going along. So if we type in summarize columns, which we got there, and then what we want to do, we want to summarize by the main set of a column that we were going to use. In this case, we used that tier code. So that's what we want to write in here. So if we type in tier code, we now have the one, but we don't want to use the Power Query one. We want to use the one from the original data set. That's the reason why we referenced from it so we could create our own separate one so we could use the original one for this example. So we want to use MPS data set and then in square brackets, original customer tier code. And now we've got that one and then want to return and then do comma. And then what you want to do is create this in two parts. You want one that's in quotation marks of what you want to call your column. And then after a comma, what the actual table is that you are doing. And also if you need any aggregation on it. Now, because we are actually aggregating, we know that for say the number of responses, we probably want to count the number of rows. So we would use count rows on that data set to do that. And then we use min date of survey, max data survey, and then average recommended. And then that will give us the same result. So if we start with what we're going to call our first column after the tier code, which was number of responses and then close bracket and then comma. And then we're going to do the count of rows. We do count rows. And then when you do count rows, you only look at the data set. You don't look at a column. So in this case, MPS data set, not the power query one, because that gives the wrong result because there's only six rows, I think. And then if you do close bracket and then for the next one, we then type in comma and then we're going to call this one min date of survey. And then we're going to type in min and then open bracket and then date of survey and then close bracket. And as I've got this one to be max, I'm just going to be lazy and completely copy that. Alt return, paste, and then change that to max and then change that to max. And then Alt return, comma, and now we're going to do the last one, which was average recommended recommend score. I remember rightly, was it recommended? Oh, I can't remember. But anyway, same thing. And then we do average and then we want to get recommend. There we go. And then we do close bracket and then we do alt return and then close bracket again. And if we press return, we'll get our table. And there we go. There is our table over here. And if we were now to drop in the same columns, but into this section here. So if we go original customer, I can see some of these are summed. Normally I would go up and then remove the summarization. But for now, I'm just going to leave it in just as be a reference because then you can see how it matches up the numbers there as well. So if I just drop that in as our number of responses. And then we need to put in the min date of survey, max date of survey, and last but no means least, 
the average recommended, which is probably going to come out as a sum when in reality, let's do average so we can see that result. And then as we can see where that's done, the average score, it's got the average here, but now we can still see it's doing the sum of the average. But in reality, because now we've changed this to average, we just take out that one and then drop it back in again. We will have the average score down here. That sorts out that problem. Now we just got the dates that we just need to format and we can do that by selecting each date and selecting long date format like that. And now max dates updated, we do the same for min. So now we have that done, just make the table a little bit bigger. And then as before, there's just all of these in the highest score to lowest score. And then we can see we have exactly the same information as we had in the other table. And as I said, this is great for if you want to be able to just have a separate table that just has that information on. But if you ever just wanted to group by just to check your data set and just understand what's going on in it, what's useful bits of information you can get from it, then maybe just doing a summarize by the actual table visual will just suffice. So I'll show you how quickly and easy it is to do that because you see how long it took to do the Power Query version and then the DAX version, which has its uses for different things. But if you just wanted to get a summary like this, you can do the same just by creating table visual, going up to your data set, finding that original customer code. So if we scroll down, we can find original customer code there, put that in. We now have the same tier code in there. And then we want to get the number of responses. We'll then want to use a column that has all data in it. So if we remember, we looked at that main hierarchy. So if we can find that one there, yep. If we drop that one in, we can then ask that to do a count. And then if we was to rename that to number of responses, we now have that matching up the same amount as well. And then we want to have date of survey, min and max. So we find date of survey, drop that in and drop that in twice. And we can see the date of survey, but that's the date of survey as of all the dates. And then because of that, it's bringing up all of them. So if we then go on to here and then do earliest to get min and then if we rename that to min keep it consistent and then we change this to max or in this case latest but then rename it like so max and then last but no means least recommend which is just there and then if we drop that in we want to then summarize that by average and then if we call that average recommend score have recommended score g there we go and then go to the end and then score make this slightly bigger and then reorder we can now see we have the same result for all the areas all the numbers and all the dates as you can see there's three ways that you can do exactly the same table so it's all down to what your preference is and your need at the time. But as always, you can see, you always have different ways of doing it. It's just pick the one that is right for the time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a like because then that'll push it out to more people. And also don't forget to subscribe so then you get notified whenever I do make any more videos. But if you want to carry on your analytical journey, you can check out these videos over here. And as always, until next time.